A lot of people don't know this, but most burlesque performers are pretty socially anxious. I'm actually very shy. But there's something that happens when you get on stage as a burlesque performer. It's a way of interacting with them when you have all the power. When I'm on stage, I'm in control. You know, just a bigger version of me, someone who uh, is more confident. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> My name is Hazel Honeysuckle. I am the Green Fairy at Absinthe, and I am from New York City. The Green Fairy is the character that ushers you into this like magical world of Absinthe where crazy things you never imagined were possible can happen. Burlesque started as a multidisciplinary show. It was basically just a satire of anything. And then they started putting the girls in. You know, there's a story about a, a dancer who uh, accidentally broke a strap. This was before strip clubs existed. That's where you would go to get your, your titillation. It came back in the 90s as neo-burlesque. It's anything the performer wants it to be including a beautiful queen up there in her, in her gown and her feathers, or, you know, someone doing a punk rock song and, and pouring paint on themselves, you know. When I started working Absinthe, it was completely different from any other job I had done. You're doing the same thing every night. You're part of this whole, like, planned story. This is definitely one of the only jobs in the world where a burlesque performer can have a full-time contract. And I'm just grateful every day for that. <laughs> when Absinthe got the new posters that had my face on them, I had no warning it was coming. I got to work and then there were these huge green signs with my face on them and it was just like, what? The big one on the side of Caesars is just bananas. When I saw it, I don't know, shock and, and excitement and butterflies in my tummy, I was like, oh, I'm on the side. The bus is my favorite one. They set my image so that the boobs are right where the wheels go. And I just burst out laughing. I thought it was the best idea. Like most burlesque performers, I make a lot of my own costumes. That's really my other main passion is making clothing and costumes and coming up with just surprising ways for a costume piece to come off or make the craziest thing you can think of and then put rhinestones on it. <laughs> These are all my green fairy pasties. It's the jewelry of the nipples, but they let me make the pasties because it's a very personal item for a burlesque performer. The pasties are custom fitted, just the right size, just the right angle. And then you've got the tassel. It sticks out just enough. The clearance. In burlesque, you do break the fourth wall, which is unique among other types of entertainment. The gloves are off. What do you say I take off the rest? As I've performed the Green Fairy role, I've added a little more personality to it. You know, little bits where I make a silly face or I or at the audience. There's something so disarming about the sexy woman who also doesn't care about making a silly face. I love seeing people react to what I do in a positive way. Praise is very addictive. <laughs>
I am just tired. I decided to go to the circus school in Berlin and did my degree in circus and I'm a professional circus performer since 2011. Every superhero has their superhero skill and I decided to go my gut and do hula hoop. Um, it just, just felt right and I love it so much but I've also had this passion for quick change which has always been a secondary act but time has come to let it take center stage. The secrets are kept between just me and Marco actually. So they'll make parts of the costumes and we'll get them and then once we get them no one else ever sees them ever again and we keep the secrets to ourselves. Having a good communication with your team is crucial to a quick change act because everything has to work perfectly. Wardrobe by committee on the size of the, of the nipple placement. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like the smaller one, but if it was sparklier. Usually you have one costume for the act, but they're going to be changing their looks throughout the act. So there's quite a few looks that we have to accomplish for them. Okay. I wonder if, if this one like We've never really had magic in absence before. We're not really sure how it's going to work out. Um, we're excited to see what happens. I like the structure. I think it works. Today we are rehearsing the new Quick Change Act here in the Spiegel Tent. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm hidden. There we go, that was it. Now it's some sort of wondering why you're just going from the stage to that box and why you're not just staying on the piano stage. That's a very good point. I mean, I kind of like, I don't know, I can't decide because I like, I like the keeping you at a height, but I also like the movement of it. I, I think it's just, if I come down here, he waves that flag over and I'm like, whoa, oh, oh. <laughs> like, Woo. don't get me. And then I run up and it's like, don't chase me, don't get me. When he waves the flag in front of you there, it, it does look like it. The, the, that half of the audience is going to expect that you're wearing a different outfit when that flag comes down. Today is the day. Feeling a little nervous, but excited. I feel like this is what we've been rehearsing for. Now it's time to shine and finally do it on stage. Right, everybody ready? Bruce, you ready? Yeah. Good. Okay. Do you need to run anything? Do we need to run stuff again or just have no. a conversation? Okay. Maybe we can run stuff again, but um, yeah. I'm so excited. The hardest part of this act is having him stand on my shoulders and I gracefully change from a superhero to a sailor. Now, it is a lot of work. This is <laughs> he is really heavy and I should be on top of him. It is really challenging for him and for me to stand up there, but... Um, I don't get what you're saying. <laughs> I have really big muscles <laughs> and the rest of the castmates are jealous. <laughs> Mankin is dangerous. On this stage, we're very close to the public. People flying over their heads. We don't have any equipment. We do some mistakes. It's really dangerous, so it can end uh, any second. And if we miss the catching, it can be very badly injury. 
that's why people like this, you know, they like moment of the risk. If they don't work together as a team, somebody can get killed. My name is Konstantin Bischotny and I'm from Russia. My name is Alexander and I'm from Ukraine. My name is Sergey Holodkov and I'm from Russia originally. My name is Dima uh, Manjeli. I'm from uh, Kharkov, uh, Ukraine. So today we're rehearsing a new mega banking act. It is a seven people act. Before we used to do a four people act. And it's a uh, huge. So today we're gonna try something new and let's see what happens. Bankin is a group of acrobats who is doing their pyramid and also throwing and catching people transfer to one basket to another basket, from one stage to another stage, flying over the audience using only human's body. We don't use any equipment. I'm a flyer, so my role mainly uh, fly around do some uh, balancing stuff. So probably most important role. <laughs> My position is a base, uh, which is means I'm catching people and I uh, was on the floor during the pyramid. So it's like a strong guy who's staying in the base. <laughs> a human body has like no limits. If you start diving deep in a, in a physics what happened inside you can achieve like great goals great strengths great movement possibilities banking and acrobatics is like uh, showing what you can achieve with that with that level this must be the solid body that's why it's very important for the beginning to create the team which is people trust each other people understand each other team supporting you know because everybody should support each other it must be trust to each other people must like each other you know so must be create uh, their own society so the trust is very important it's important to be uh, to work like one organism personally i'm not getting scared during the act because if I'm gonna be scared, how is my partner gonna feel like if base who he need to trust, he going on top, is scared? I don't think it's gonna work for him. I'd say right now I'm not nervous at all. I get scared every second show probably. <laughs> I am uh, the one who is flying from one basket to another, to the shoulder, cologne, and from one stage to another stage. So the risk is everywhere, but that's that's what I like. That's what's driving me in this life. And uh, it's giving me some piece of adrenaline every show. This is something you cannot buy. That's what we search all our life, you know, from the professional athletes to present day. Every day, if you not perform, you have something inside that's missing. And that, that piece of adrenaline, that's what we miss. is watching you like you under a microscope most important to not fail you want to show what hard work you did before you want to show that it pays off it's a big piece of adrenaline and you have to come down be able to put your body down put your brain in the right place amount of adrenaline especially first time you go on stage is just crazy ladies and gentlemen Welcome to Spiegel World at Caesar's Palace! Okay. I 
would just feel like my stomach was falling out. It scared me so much. How is it gonna affect my career in the future? So yeah, I got really, really scared. My career started when I was about four years old and I was a very energetic child. My mom had to put that energy somewhere, so she took me to aerobic and dance classes, and that's what I've been doing until I discovered acrobatics. When we joined Absence in Las Vegas, that's when we started working towards Vapal Act. It actually faced uh, a lot of challenges, like technical and safety issues, so it took us a good two years to find the right equipment and how to work with it in a tight space. Normally, they like 17 to 25 feet high and that means the higher the pole, the easier it can bend, which in our space, it's limiting how tall we can have the pole. The equipment have to be built very specifically, so it gives us that flexibility. And you make a step on stage you almost like in this bubble where everyone cheering for you the music is loud and you're a center of spotlight I still want to perform it's a really really cool feeling that it's really hard to walk away from It's very traumatic to fall and to get injured. In our unicycle, there's a smoke machine, which has a battery. So the whole thing is like all chromed and tubes and stuff. So they made a very light unicycle into a very heavy one. There was one incident where the unicycle fell off the stage and this lady just caught it, the hero that night. She <laughs> prevented a major accident. We're there to make them safe and to make the act secure and go on night after night. It's a big responsibility, but also it's just part of the job. It's part of the, the role that we have. My name's Alana. I'm from the UK and I do sway poles in absinthe. My name is Phil. I'm from Quebec City, Canada, and I am a unicyclist on absinthe. My main discipline is sports acrobatics, which I also do in absinthe. We do the trio as well as sway poles. And when I was on another show, I also learned sway poles. So I kind of had a bit of an experience before joining absinthe of how to use a sway pole and how to work it. A porter essentially is, is the base, is the one on the floor supporting other people, other acrobats. We both have the same skill sets. We're on the ground throwing people, holding them, lifting. I guess we did kind of try to do an act together, but it wasn't that much of a success. The reality is that we both need little people to... To lift. Yes. <laughs> um, when I was approached by Spiegel World, I remember exactly, it was January 1st. And we were both hungover, and we got the text and it was kinda, oh wow, okay, this is amazing, this is finally happening. I mean, it was such an amazing feeling, already knowing that Phil was working with Spiegel World, to be joining the same show, the set, like we'd been wanting to get on the same show for a long time, to have the same schedule. So when they approached me, I was so excited. I was straight away, I was like, yeah, I'm available, I'm here, I'm ready to go, I can start tomorrow. <laughs> and to be fair, like she was definitely the best option for, the, for this role. So Alana was, you know, Phil's wife. Suddenly things were gonna shift a little bit. Rather than being Phil's wife and no one really knows what I'm capable of, for them to be able to see what I'm capable of and like, oh, okay, she's, she's talented too. It's not just him. I stand my own ground. <laughs> For me, there's a big difference when I was on a touring show compared to being on Absinthe, is that the audiences are so much closer. That much of an intimacy, it does affect our performance and it makes it more unique night after night because you get to actually have these interactions. So there's something magical about being able to connect with them directly and feed off them. 
for me, where I see similarities is from street performance. I, when I was on the street and you know, gathering a crowd, and I really got to connect with my audience, and now I kind of see this same kind of interaction with the audience, which I really enjoy, and it's a fun little thing to be able to improvise with them. Yeah, and I think it just makes it more enjoyable for the artist and the audience, the closer you are, because they each get a more unique experience together. However many times we do the show, the people in the audience are seeing it for the first time. I get to do what I love, and it's our way of expressing our emotions and putting a smile on someone else's face. And there's nothing that beats it. It's what I've always dreamed of doing. I never feel like I'm working. <laughs> there's so much more to discover in Circus Town. Check out more videos and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a trick. Watch that. Did I get it? Is it right there? See this? Now your turn. You can do it. <laughs>